Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and today we're back with version 1.4's two new characters, two waifus in version 1.4, and we're going to talk about the investment value for both of these DPS characters. On surface, they seem very close, like one is Destruction Ice, one is Hunt Fire, and they couldn't be more similar, right? But of course, after we talk about it a bit more in this video, you'll understand there are certain accounts that will benefit a lot more from a particular unit over the other unit, and vice versa as well. And I want to start off first, of course, when we are talking always about buying something new, we want to know their exact current value because we want to benefit from it now, right? No point buying for the future. We'll leave that towards the later part when we talk about future value. But let's first talk about current value for accounts. I think right now the player base is like super broad because the game has been out for a while now. I'll categorize it from like one extreme of players to all the way to the other and everything else in between. We'll talk about the description of who might benefit more in certain situations. I think on the first extreme is the very defensive accounts. For some reason, you just keep pulling defensive characters like Japart, you put Fu Shen, you put Luo Cha, you put Bai Lu, and all the, like, the healer characters, and you just don't have DPSs in your account. If you're this group of people, I think that either one of these two characters will be tons of value, even Zealer who's coming up. I'll talk about Zealer in a subsequent video, but this is really meant for these two characters. If you are basically feeling like your account is just too defensive, no offensive units, I just want to put you at peace of mind. Either of these are solid choices for the long run as well. So that's for the first group of people. On the other extreme, like we go all the way the other end, you just don't want to pull or for some reason just have very bad luck of pulling any defensive unit. You got tons of offensive units. So you have like Zealer, Tingyuan, you already have Blade, you have Clara, you have Imbibitor Lune and stuff like that. And maybe you only have a couple of uh, healers here and there, not even enough sustain. Those are like the super offensive accounts. In that case, this situation, one of them does perform better currently for you. And in my opinion, I think it'll be a character, for example, like uh, Topaz and Nambi, because she doesn't really uh, need, for example, uh, to be a main DPS in the roster. Ting Liu has two things that are slightly disadvantaged on very, very offensive accounts. She does want a little bit of some sort of sustain for the rest of the team, as well as does want a bit more investment in terms of the team buffing her, pushing her up and stuff like that. Uh, Topaz and Nambi, on the other hand, has a bit more supportive ability where you can let some other character take the alarm light when you just buff, for example, follow-up attack damage as well. A very different style of play. And I think like for the other extreme, like for those people who have like only offensive units, uh, likely, I would say Topaz and Nambi is slightly better. And as you can see from the video so far, I'm going to be super impartial. I'm going to be like unbiased for the majority of this video when I'm talking about all the different categories as I do with every of these investment videos on the channel. Uh, towards the end, of course, I'll give you a little bit of my bias for any of you who care about any of that. That's my commitment to you for the entirety of this video to until the end, of course. So... Other than talking about the, comparing these to two extremes, the bigger part which majority of us would lie is anything else in between. I'll tell you who is slightly better for which in terms of the current account state that you might have. If you are a player, for example, you have Jingyuan, you have Clara, you have, you really like like Himiko, Herta, as well as Mark 7, you are like a super Jingyuan fan, super Clara fan. In that case, I think Topaz and Nambi likely will attract you a little bit more and will add more value to your account. Not only because Clara as well as Tingyuan are slightly more AoE in nature, she is of course a single target hunt character which complements them very nicely, but you can always give the limelight to for example a character like Jingyuan, uh, Clara, you can boost them up, damage buff and whatever not, and she can of course uh, put the proof of depth on the enemy. When you drop that uh, weakness on the enemy, they have increased follow-up damage. In that sense, she works as something like a complementary sub-DPS or secondary DPS character, still doing a lot of damage, but uh, able to work from the second in the limelight as well. On the other hand, I think if you, maybe you don't care about these characters, um, you started a bit later on your account, maybe you joined Honkai Staro recently, you just pulled for Imbibitor Lune as your main DPS, maybe you got started from Kafka's banner because you really liked her and stuff like that. Ting Liu, in this case, I think will really work very well with Kafka accounts or players that started later. If you have already Ting Yuan and Zealer, I think the value of another main DPS will diminish quite significantly, but of course you need two main DPS roughly for each half of the Memory of Chaos. For accounts that don't have too main DPSs, I think Ting Liu is very, very nicely positioned in the second account. And of course, now that we talk a bit about their current value and what kind of broad accounts uh, will benefit well for most of them, I think in order to continue on this topic further, we need to look at the second part, which is alternatives. And in this second category of alternatives is really looking at, like, for example, you want to buy a new bag. You really like the new bag, but you already have certain bags that you have. Do you really need a particular type? Or maybe you are going for camping and you don't have a camping bag, so you want to get that instead. That's what this category aims to talk about. And as you can see, I have a few pictures here already. In Ting Liu's case, I think the alternatives are characters that she doesn't really want to play on the same team with. Maybe it's much better to run them each in a separate half, for example. 
Two characters out of all of the characters in the game come to mind. I have a lot of pictures here, I know, but the two that I'm thinking of is Yan Xing as well as Imbibator Lune. And uh, let me explain in a little bit. For these two, it's much simpler to understand. I think each of them will much rather like filling up one slot on each half. In that case, they don't really want to play together in the same team because you might as well rather like put a bit more hyper carry each style, buffing a same type element and etc. I think they will work much better there. Whereas, of course, uh, characters like Blade really can be run as a sub DPS on the same team as uh, Ting Liu. We, it's yet to be seen whether her sapping of teammates ability is considered as damage proc for both, for example, Blade building stacks as well as Yan Ting uh, getting his passive remove. That is the part that we are not confirmed that we have to see as well. In that case, I think a character like Ting Liu and Yan Ting, they could work on the same team, but if you already have Yan Ting very well built, you likely have no urgent need for another ice type main DPS. Other than for this particular situation of Yan Ting, I think most accounts right now, even if you have these four characters, the other ice type characters being built, uh, even maybe with Herta very very well stacked or Pella very well built, I think Ting Liu is very very good even though you have the ice category uh, more or less checked in that sense already. So if you have Yan Ting, value lowered. If you have Imbibital Lune and maybe another main DPS already, likely similar in terms of uh, overall playstyle, destruction kind of playstyle. And that is my thoughts on alternatives, uh, in my opinion quite few and far between. Topaz, on the other hand, is a little bit more uh, lucky in that sense because she fulfills a little bit of the different niche. If we take plain and simple, like we talk about hunt and fire first, she has tons of competition. If we talk about like the base level, not talk, thinking about it more in depth. For fire, for fire break damage, of course, you already have characters like Fire MC, who a lot of us played, especially in the beginning of the game where we don't have too many defensive units. We have a very strong harmony character like Asta already offering tons of fire break damage. So in that case, she has heavy amounts of competition here, Himiko also, and etc. Even with the new Kuei Naifen coming out, tons of fire break damage already in that case. Hunt is not a rare uh, class either. We have a very strong uh, free to play because we a lot of us got her from event already. Um, Su Sang is also competition for her, a very good four star that can be played as a secondary DPS. Uh, Zealer, who's also going to be on the banner. We will talk about Zealer as well as Topaz on a separate video for any of you who are interested. This is very, very strong competition as well. They both fulfill similar roles if you're talking about just Han DPS single target characters. And of course, Dan Heng, which all of us have for free. Uh, tons of competition on surface value. But I think the alternatives that she starts to escape from in terms of current game state, for any of us who are looking to build for the future, future team compositions, which we'll talk about in a bit, the alternatives for follow-up attack buffers and running like Path of Elation is few and far between right now. We know, a lot of us know, that uh, follow-up characters are not really very well favoured right now because of the game state, don't really get a lot of buffs. But she coming into the game or her arrival really does change up certain things and I think we could see characters like Jing Yuan as well as Clara benefiting quite a bit more. And in that case, I would say that she has no alternatives in the category of boosting follow-up damage category for now. I think it's very, very interesting to explore as well. And those are my thoughts so far for the first two categories. Now, now that we talk about like current game state, the most important thing now is to look at future potential. What can they bring in the future? Because that's what investment is. We don't want to always waste our money just for living in the present. And in this third category, I think there's one major thing that really stands out. Currently in the game, we have only one fire type harmony unit, which we know are like super, super strong. All the harmony units are very, very good because they are able to run planetary rendezvous, which boosts like same type damage. Currently in the game, we don't have an ice harmony character yet. Neither do we have a five star harmony character. So the first most important thing is, uh, Ting Liu, in Ting Liu's case, we have two upsides, either a five star harmony character that is limited coming up other than Bronya, for those of us who don't have her, um, that's one. And the second one, she also exposed to benefiting from a, a four-star even Ice Harmony character. And those are two very strong upsides for players looking for future value. Topaz, on the other hand, already has a fire-type Harmony unit. Unless she's super lucky and gets like a five-star fire-type uh, Harmony unit, the chances of her having a better investment value or future value uh, feels a bit more distant compared to Ting Liu, who has a higher probability of likely getting one of those two uh, between the both of them. That's like the first thing that stands out. Other than that, of course, the other thing about future value, of course, that we need to think of is competition. And this bit, this category is basically like kind of like power creep. How exposed are they to not only getting better characters to help boost them, but also having more competition that enters into the game. Between the two of them, I think the future value for Ting Liu looks slightly bleaker, especially with more DPSs. We have characters like we saw Imbibitor Lune coming in, which a lot of, of people already said kicked off like Zilla or from the top DPS list. We can kind of feel that DPS characters inherently have a lot of competition. 
they face much more pressure to remain at the top because DPS characters, everyone cares about looking at the biggest number, doing the most out of the character possible. And being like only graded on one matrix is very, very tiring. Uh, very easy to power creep in that sense because it's all just one number. On the other case, if you think it on uh, Topaz and Nambi's sense, you can't really categorize her into a DPS because she also does have in her kit some sort of healing mechanic or supporting mechanic rather uh, to boost up follow up damage. In that case, she does fulfill very similar to a character like Dan Heng, who is although a Han character a DPS by class, but because of the ability for him to have speed down in his kit, and in her case, increasing follow-up damage, they become less susceptible to power creep in that sense and also become a little bit more independent from traditional matrix of uh, just being who does the biggest number. In that case, I think in terms of future value, the chances of this character, Topaz and Nami, being a lot more pressured is much lower, of course, since she bo uh, boosts follow-up damage, uh, allowing her to be some sort of a support as well. Not a full support, granted, but I think it's a niche that she has carved up for herself and her overall build as well, which makes a lot of sense for Hoyoverse to do it this way because uh, she obviously is much more popular in terms of the, the matrix that's being graded. Her VA is also like super famous. So of course, Hoyoverse, from their perspective, like logical sense, in order to make her sell well, they need to, of course, make her kit a little bit more scalable with time so that they can run her a rerun if people, everyone pulls Ding Liu now and skips her, at least she has some value in the future too. So I think this is, makes tons of logical sense uh, so far. Um, that's my perspective on future value as well. Now, in order to look at the next category, I think is the category of potential. And this category is a bit different. Let me explain why. And at this point of the video, I think some of you who have been watching the previous few categories feel that Topaz maybe is slightly aging out. But this category, I think, is very, very important to consider in order to see Ting Liu's very true strengths. And potential is, is future value in a sense, but it's also a bit more uh, wishing as well as like uh, fantasizing of what's going to happen in future. Why do I say that? It's because it's not concrete, it's just guessing. And the real biggest question about potential is all of the plus points of Topaz and Nambi versus Ting Liu comes because of her ability to act as a sub, uh, secondary DPS to boost up a follow-up attacker. The biggest question that lies is how confident are we that we want to even play follow-up attacks in future, whether we want to even play Path of Elation in the simulated universe, or do we not even care about any of that and we prefer a much more traditional type of DPS like Ting Liu, a healer, you run with a DPS character and it's more straightforward, run with a buffer, defense shredder and stuff like that. For those of us who don't even care about the potential of the Path of Elation follow-up characters, we don't even like the style of like the zoo kind of style where you have Characters like the Lightning Lord acting out of your turn, you have like pets that you summon that do out of your turn, attacking with Clara for example, outside of turn order which is a bit more unorthodox turn based game style where it's not the traditional route. If you don't care about the potential of that kind of gameplay, that style of gameplay that Topaz is bringing in, in that case whatever we have mentioned in the video kind of doesn't really matter as much and Ting Liu definitely will top out in this category and sway your bias and the decision making a heavier onto Ting Liu's end. Because if you don't care about that, she's going to be another simple Han DPS fire type in nature that if you don't care about follow-up attacks and playing with other combination of follow-up attackers, probably doesn't matter what else that we have also talked about that even lasts longer because you won't even exploring those in future as well. Uh, very similar in a sense to a, a situation like Kafka. If some of you don't even like DOT teams to begin with, you don't like the difference of a DOT playstyle, you probably won't be able to enjoy that character and much rather, for example, a character like Blade who is much more simpler and much more flexible to run as we did in their comparison video back in version 1.2 as well. So that's what I want to mention. I think in terms of potential, that's the biggest thing that I want to talk about. And other than that, of course, um, there might be changes in future to put in follow-up uh, attacks more into the game, like maybe buffing elation, buffing follow-up attackers too, uh, to make it more into the meta. In that case, it might favor Topaz to be a little bit more in the limelight, like how they try to introduce more DOTs. We can see them trying to make an effort here. Uh, follow up for follow-up attacks but more has to be seen this is a bit more subjective and it's based on really your decision whether it's a very very significant potential or whether the risks are very very low only you will know uh, everyone has different biases for this section here and last but not least i think of course is talking about the free-to-play kit because this is super important we don't want to have to spend like make sure that we spend both on their light cone, their Eidolons, in order to make them work. It's very different when we're talking about E0, a low investment character, versus an E6, S5 kind of character, which is like totally different uh, ballparks. In my opinion, if both of them have already their simulated uh, universe light cones out, the Hertha shop ones, 
the destruction one is of course a little bit more inferior to the Han one since the Han one gives crit rate and that is a much more universal stat that can be used by a lot of people. Of course, I'm not saying that it's, it's bad on either of them, the, the free-to-play light cones currently, but I'm just saying that out of the two of them and given the chance of another same type light cone being added in the future for free-to-play, I would say that uh, Topaz and Nambi likely ages out here. Also because she has access to a lot more better 4-star options, for example, you can play Sword Play, which is also really strong. We talk about it in like the build guide videos individually for these characters, so what you can build. Check that out if you want more specifics on those. But I think that Destruction Light Cones are a little bit more challenging to get good ones. Uh, in that case, I would say that Topaz and Numbi ages out for that uh, fact that uh, free-to-play Light Cones are much easily accessible to most people. But then again, if you are willing to top up to like E0S1 and find their signature Light Cone, uh, of course then it's no longer free-to-play kit, but it's going to be like a, a dolphin, small spender kind of kit, uh, if, especially if you're saved up for it. Maybe you're free to play with saved up. In that case, I think that uh, Ting Liu is going to be way better. Her S1 light cone uh, possibly is going to be a lot better, especially if you can get rid of the light cone factor. Uh, Ice is very, very easy to play because you get freeze control in a kit as well. In my opinion, like if you are willing to pay for a light cone, uh, pay in terms of resources, not literally money, I think that Ting Liu likely will be a better investment value out of Topaz. Um, it, that's in my personal opinion, especially if you already have other characters that we mentioned, alternatives and stuff like that. And those are my thoughts for the five different sections. If you want to know my bias between these two characters, I personally favor, uh, my heart says Ting Liu is better, but my logic says, especially if I'm a content creator, I want to create content on follow-up team comms, my logic would tell me that Topaz and Nambi makes more sense for the long run, for a bit more variety of videos to make. Uh, either way, I'm going to be pulling both of them on my account. I, will, I like both of them equally as much, maybe a little bit more on Ting Liu for now. We'll see how it goes. I'll be doing covering content for both of them so you guys can stay tuned on the channel too. And if you appreciate such um, mostly unbiased content, I do this every single patch. I'll be doing one for Topaz and Numbi as well as Zilo coming up. You can check back on the channel if you're interested in these kind of content as well. Do this every patch. Like and subscribe for more of such future content. And thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.